Oh shit. Why did I do that? I could see I was driving into a wall and I just kept going. Alright, so we're back at the visitor center. Uh, I don't imagine there's anything in here, but I'm gonna have a quick look at where the deputy's body was. The ranger, I mean. Okay, well, there's at least some ammo, so I'll take that. It'd be really silly if you could actually just wrap around the entire level, but I don't think that's the case. It has to eventually stop you. Let's, uh, let's get back in the car. I'm trying to remember how you actually get to... Yeah, not there. Where is Barry? Because it's somewhere from here. Here, up the dirt road. That's where it was. This is where all the cabins are. Okay, uh, that's a pretty clear indicator of you need to walk now. I imagine flares are really good against the bird. Since they're so weak to light, that probably wipes them out if they try to fly in on you. The flare gun was probably the best weapon I could imagine against the dark things I was facing. Oh. I know it's just a result of how his animations work, but it's always been kind of silly to me that, like... So, like, dodge and sprint are the same button, right? So, like, he's just sprinting there, right? But sometimes he does that, where he does a dodge into a sprint. And if you're not in a fight, it, it looks really silly. Ever. You son of a bitch! Where's my wife? Enough horse play, Wake! You deliver the manuscript, and you can have your woman back. Simple as that. It's just efficient. I don't... <laughs> Listen... Listen, I'm gonna need time to finish it. I still need to write the ending. I need a week. It's not done. I need a week. Two days. The old Bright Falls coal mine is nearby. You can find it easy, city boy. The main building, there at noon. You bring the manuscript, you'll get your wife. If not, well, get me. Yes, yes, I, I get you. You know what occurs to me? On the ferry, that guy was complaining about yuppies, but like, this game came out in 2010. Yuppies were an ease thing, weren't they? Talked they? About birds over the phone. <laughs> what does that say? The darkness controls the taken. Let's try a flare. That didn't do shit. Ow! Ow, I am so glad you're here. A couple of them got in here before I blocked the chimney. This isn't normal. These birds are weird. Okay. 
spotting the swarm before it appears is the problem. I keep thinking it's just one swarm at a time, but it seems like there's multiple bustling around. As soon as, as soon as I keep my eyes on one for too long, I'm going to come back. Psychotic episode, man. All is forgiven, Barry. I sent Barry to the town to ask around about a man fitting the kidnapper's description. He'd go through the archives of the local paper. Perhaps he could learn something. Anything about the island and the cabin that had disappeared. The man wanted a manuscript. I had to try to write him one to get Alice back. For me, the supernatural had always been nothing but a metaphor for the human psyche, a tool to use in writing fiction. Now, it was happening for real, and I couldn't put a single word on paper. Barry Wheeler speaking. This is Rose. Rose? I found Mr. Wake's pages. Oh, you sweet, brilliant girl. Could you and Mr. Wake come get them? I live in the trailer park outside the town. We'll be there in less than an hour. See you soon. Have a great day. Hope you come back soon. Welcome, Welcome to, to the old dear diner. Good girl. Well, if she wasn't a crazy fan before, she is now.
I'm not sure, Dash. On Alan Wake, no idea. Alice has been kidnapped. Alan, please help me. Alice? You'll do exactly what I say if you ever want to see your wife again. I can't tell anyone except my agent, Barry. Damn it, Barry, they'll kill her. You're my best friend, and I'm worried that you're not right in the head. The ransom is a manuscript I supposedly wrote that's coming true before my eyes. It happened just the way it was on that page. So... Dark. I have found only a few scattered pages. I want the entire manuscript. The deadline ah. is in two days. I found Mr. Wake's pages. Good girl. How the hell did she get her hands on the manuscript anyway? I don't know. She's resourceful. I told you you were too hard on her. Listen, I found out all sorts of interesting stuff while I was digging around. Yeah. Mr. Wake, it's Sheriff Breaker. We have an FBI agent here, Agent Nightingale. FBI? He's anxious to see you. You'd better come to the station. Okay, I'll be right over, Sheriff. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll be this streaming quick. for about another 40 minutes, and then I'm going to call it. Help you folks? Name's Randolph. I'm the manager. We're looking for Rose. Works as a waitress down at the diner. Rose, sure. Nice girl. Who wants to know? I'm Alan Wake. The writer, huh? I heard on the radio you were visiting. Well, I'll show you her trailer. That Rose, she's a nice girl. Always pays her rent on time. As I was saying, Al, I found all sorts of weird stuff from the local newspaper's archives. This place is crazy. Disappearances, mysterious deaths, urban legends come true, and get this, most of this stuff takes place around Cauldron Lake. Well, you ain't wrong, mister. The Indians thought the lake was a doorway to the underworld. I'm the God-fearing type myself. I, I don't hold with that sort of thing. Yeah, okay. Anyway, there was an island there owned by a guy called Thomas Zane. Now, some of the articles I found about him make him out to be a famous writer. But I ran a bunch of searches, couldn't find a single thing he wrote. Zane was heavily into diving, so much so that the place came to be called Diver's Isle. But the volcano under the lake erupted in 1970, and Zane went down with the island. That's strange. I could have sworn we saw a note saying it happened in 1980. Unless it was talking about a different volcano. It gets better. A local girl, Barbara Jagger, drowned in Cauldron Lake just a week earlier. They were lovers. Sure, Jagger's a local spook story. The scratching hag comes for you in the dark. Childish stuff like that. Anyway, Al, I'm just getting to the best part. All of the articles about this stuff were written by Cynthia Weaver. I asked around, and she's that crazy bag lady you met. What, the lamp lady? She can be a little loopy, but she's not homeless or anything. Yeah, anyway, she knew both Jagger and Zane before they both died, and she had some kind of Jesus a breakdown. <laughs> Alan's trying to literally rewrite history. I had a thought and I lost it, damn it. <laughs> well, mister, this here's Rose's trailer. You mind me asking what you want with her? We're just here to talk to her, pal. Yes. Talk. That's all that's going to happen in here. We're all going to be very civil. Nothing bad's going to happen. Welcome to... To... Oh, dear. Mr. Wake. I'm... I'm so glad you're here. Rose, you have my manuscript? Oh. Oh, yes. Yes. Please, come in. She's acting sus. Shoot her. Hey, this is really good. Rose. Yes. My manuscript. I really need it. I understand. I know what you need. A muse to inspire you. Oh, for Barry. She doesn't have anything. Yeah. Uh, hey, Al. Al, what's... Oh. Barry! What? What? Man, Alan's body clock must be absolutely fucked. 
I don't know when he's getting his sleep in. Well, I guess right now. It's coming for you. Hiding in my barber's skin. I'm too weak to stop it. You must turn the lights on. I promised I'd come visit you and your lovely wife. You must finish what you started. I insist. You must turn the lights on. I remember what I was going to say. Turn the light on. Back to work, boy. Ah! Oh god, I'm in her fucking Alan Wake shrine. I felt nauseous, hung over. Only anger kept me going. I can't tell reality from dream anymore, but it seems I have an imaginary editor to help me. She's an old woman in a funeral dress. I call her Barbara Jagger. She's very strict. I I'm writing faster and faster. My manuscript is being heavily revised. The edits are getting very aggressive, and each day there's less of me and more of her. I hate it, but I know she's right. That's the other factor, is that quote-unquote Barbara is way. editing she his knows manuscript. Than I do, about the complex incantation I'm attempting, about this place. She's worked with another writer under similar circumstances, Thomas Zane. The genre of the story seems to be shifting. It's turning into a horror story. I'm getting close. I can feel it. So what I was going to say was, is that I'm currently listening to a podcast uh, based on SCP Foundation. And they're dealing with the, you might know this one, Dash, uh, the bodies in the water, where they like lure you in with like the voices of your loved ones, and you drown. And uh, they've taken that and built like a fuller narrative around it called Class of Seventy Six, and I'm and it's it sounds an awful lot like what this town's got going on with Cauldron Lake, and I'm wondering if there's like a base story that they're both uh, based on. Let's see, can we read any of our books? Medicated to Hate. Uh, that's about... I think that's, that's the only one I can really make out. That text is messed up. Look at that book. The, the, the spine is actually wrapped around under the front of the books. And some of the books are like misshapen. Yeah, that's that is so fucking disturbing. Holy shit! What's that one say? Believe change. Rose took a day for me. I had less than twelve hours left to meet the kidnapper. All I could do was get Barry into the car, work something out once I got on the road. No, that's Welcome okay. You weren't getting any writing done anyway. What can I get you today? Coffee. I couldn't work up much hate for Rose. Something had used her to get to me, and left its mark. First refill is free. Milk and sugar on the counter there. Would you like to hear today's specials? Thank you. Have a nice day. Come back soon. Alright, we need to get the hell out of here. We'll come pick Barry up later. My gun and flashlight were gone. I'd have to find a way to get Barry into the car as quickly as possible. There was no time to waste. Mr. Randolph liked Rose. That little smile she had. How she was still sweet when life had tried so hard to make her bitter. It wasn't any of his business what she did in her trailer. But those strangers, the writer and his smart-ass sidekick, looked like trouble. And they'd been in there for hours, way past her normal bedtime. He reached for the phone and called the sheriff's station. Man, imagine getting called out by the police for that. It's like, I think, I think she... <laughs> I don't like that they've been in there for like three hours. Yeah, it went great. I just stepped outside to catch a breath of fresh air. I haven't even recovered from my head trauma and I'm already getting drugged. Nights like this make me especially glad I'm here talking to you and not home in bed. Once once the weather takes a turn like this, I can't sleep at all. It's all tangled bed sheets and dark thoughts, punctuated by the occasional plunge into nightmare. <laughs> so you did your dailies, Chibi? Well, perhaps it is. But 
Right, I hope I can make the night a little bit easier to get through. Caller, you're on KBF FM. Hey, hi, it's Walt Snyder. What's on your mind, Walt? Well, I ain't the way you are, but, well, uh, I can't sleep either, you know? Uh, I just been staring out of the window here, trying to make... Man, we must have killed, like, half the population of the town at this point. Well, you sound like a oh, nice. No good joke. Good going, Chibi. I was trying to big you up as being really good, but your opponents are just trash. <laughs> Oh, this is the drunk from the police station. And there's something in the air tonight, man. Uh, I was just outside looking up at the sky above our broadcast tower thinking the same thing. What are you waiting for, Walt? I, I don't know. I, you know, something's gonna happen. You know, I gotta, I gotta, I, I think I better go. Well, uh, Walt, uh, maybe... No, th thanks, Pat. Uh, well, good luck to you, Walt. Hang in there. Uh, let's take a little break, folks. This weather's <laughs> yeah. really something else, huh? Oh, quick. Run away from the licensed music. It's coming for my video. Run, Ray, run. Classic 80s hits are coming to get you. Gonna get it now. God knows what you've done to that poor girl. This is Agent Nightingale, FBI. Get a mop, Hemingway. You're under arrest. You move a muscle, I'll unload right in your goddamn face. Stay right where you are, Slane. Right here, you goddamn maniac! Oh, this FBI agent, real stable. I hated to leave Barry behind, but there was no way I'd miss my appointment with the kidnapper. Give it up, Mr. Wade. Come on! Man, you know, it must have been really dark. You know, he couldn't tell that I was white. I surrender. I'm right here. I'm not resisting. My hands are right where you can see them. I am not resisting. <laughs> I don't even have a gun, for fuck's sake. We conducted a manhunt for this writer. What did he do? He was in that girl's trailer after dark. What a piece of shit. <laughs> it gets worse. He was also accompanied by his sarcastic sidekick. Okay, look, the story justifies the FBI agent. He's crazy. He's going nuts. That's why he wants to kill Alan. But the others, they're just really bad cops. <laughs>
Oh, quick, a manuscript page. What insight will it give us? For decades, the darkness that wore Barbara Jagger's skin slept fitfully in the dark place that was its home and prison. It was hungry and in pain. It dreamed of its nights of glory when the poet's writing had called it from the depths and given it a brief, terrible taste of power and freedom. The rock stars had stirred it from the deep sleep the poet had sunk it back to in the end. When it sensed the writer on the ferry, it opened its eyes. Yeah, so this evil feeds off of creativ creativity. Like, particularly, like, creative individuals. If they enter the town, it can feed off of them and try to manipulate them. Whoa. You okay? There's nobody even in there. Oh, I think this might be the part where I have to dodge Taken without a gun. I'll need to be very particular about when I sprint. your dodge is on a cooldown, you can't rely on that to stay safe. You will have to run. This horror was everywhere I went, circling me. The cops didn't stand a chance. They were after a writer, not a monster. Honestly, I think the police will do just fine. They have flashlights and they have guns. Been doing us pretty well so far. There's a fucking explosion happening over there. Uh, is there anything else or not? Not really, no. Okay. I was expecting to look out into the forest and fucking see Barbara just standing in the trees. Yeah, there's another one. That is our ticket out of here. We need to get to the radio station.
Nope, nope. I almost threw myself off the ledge. I imagine that they the really should put more guardrails. Distance was part of the local radio station. Maine seemed like a decent guy. Perhaps he could give me directions to the coal mine. Unnatural shadows clung to the gate. The darkness that was after me was trying to stop. I wouldn't get through without a light. I don't imagine there's going to be any supplies since the game has been giving me, like, nothing to work with right now. But I do have a light. Oh, that's the power of this thing. Okay. It's conveniently placed a giant searchlight. It's so convenient that it breaks after 10 seconds of use. I have to assume that Alan's ability to, like, boost his flashlight is just supernatural. Because it drains the battery at a third speed. So what you guys don't see there is uh, the vibration on the controller goes absolutely fucking crazy when you're destroying those things. It took me a moment to recognize the flashbang grenades. They were an ideal weapon for my situation. That's what it is. Okay, yeah, you, you switch between flares and flashbangs. Alright, that's deadly. Good to know. Damn it, press the rotten room. Too slow. Okay. Yeah. You back the fuck off. Oh god, there's another one already. At least it kills them instantly. Like, I don't have to worry about the fact that I don't have a gun. And here's another call. You're on KBFFM with Pat Main. It's Milk no Peabody, Pat. What's on your mind, Milt? Well, I live near the trailer park, Pat, and there's a big ruckus going on over there. Well, that's just up the road from me, too. Uh, what's going on, do you know? I don't know, but there's a bunch of police cars there, lots of sirens, a helicopter buzzing around, and I think I heard some gunshots. Gunshots? Yes, sir, like from a pistol. So can you find out what's going on? Because it's just next door, and they're popping off guns there. They're still shooting? No, it was maybe 10, 15 minutes ago. It sounds serious, Pat. I'm telling you, it don't sound like no party. Well, uh, I'm certainly going to give the station a call, Milt. Okay. You'll hear it here as soon as I hear from them. Okay, Why thanks. didn't Milt call the police instead of calling the radio to ask them to call the police? For our benefit, it was just that we would hear it. <laughs> Touched by the dark presence, Rose was lost in a dreamland where everything was drawn in black and gray crayons. The old lady had promised her that all her wishes would come true, 
She would be Alan Wake's muse. She was smiling so hard it hurt her face. She crushed a bottle full of sleeping pills into the coffee. Deep down inside, she was screaming in terror. Oof. So I just noticed I apparently dropped 484 frames, which is only 0.1%, but like still. It makes me wonder if like the stream lagged at some point. It just occurred to me that these taken are cops. We're killing cops right now. Apparently this town has a lot of deputies. anymore. That's a very fair point. Alan's taken the whole defund the police thing. Uh, I don't want to say it too far, but he's, got, he's definitely going his own way about it. Oh, that's not good. I need more flashbangs. I need more anything. I hope Maine could lend me a car to get to the coal mine. Yeah, I need some supplies, like, real bad. <laughs> Fucking coffee. The Night Owl. The voice of Pat Main all night, every night. In, Mr. Wake. Oh, I'm so glad you could find the time to do this, Mr. Wake. Nowhere to run now, Dan Brown. You back away from me. Don't hurt. Whoa. Man, well, he just knows all the writers. Put the gun down. We're all friends here, right? Cool your jets, Nightingale. We got him. Judas Priest. What the hell's the matter with you? There's a civilian in there. No getting away from me, McCormick, Cormac McCarthy. I'm sending you on the road to hell. I had fallen off so many cliffs it was ridiculous. That's what you get for naming a book The Sudden Stop. It was probably good I hadn't had the chance to tell Maine where I was going. I'd have to lose You've the sent your last tweet, J.K. Rowling. <laughs> Nightingale stared through the broken studio window into the dark. Yeah. Place. He turned around. Started to walk out, but Maine grabbed his arm. Young man, you almost shot me. You don't shoot off rounds at people like that. What's the matter with you? Nightingale shook his arm free, marched out. His cheeks burned with rage and humiliation. I'm trying to think of other author names and I'm coming up completely blank. <laughs> Can you tell I don't read a lot of books? Oh, fuck, okay. 
Nope, that's not happening. Yeah, no. I need to use the flare. I was like, there gotta be an item around here. I had fallen off so many cliffs, it was ridiculous. That's what you get for naming a book the sudden stop. It was probably good I hadn't had the chance to tell Maine where I was going. I'd have to lose the cops and find my own way to the mine. Time window. There we are. And the gun. Nice. That gun was there the whole time and I could have just grabbed it. That section is not as long as I remember. Like the dodging taken without a gun. tempted to run down, run back down and heal in the light, but it's not worth it. I got enough. Not one pip. Actually, no, I'm at 50%. That's fine. <laughs> Nightingale shows back up. I just want to ask you some questions, Stephen King. Slow down, Wake. You're being a real dickens. <laughs> Alright, that's my last one. I'm not going to try and do any more writer puns. I hope I'm not walking backwards. I don't think I am. No, no, this is a new area. It's honestly hard to tell. I get so turned Daniel around. Stepped out, but what stumbled back in was something else. Something alien. A monster. Walter tried to kill it. First with his fists, then a chair. It wouldn't die. Instead, it kept coming, unaffected by the beating it had taken. After Walter managed to kick it down the cellar stairs, fear took over. He ran, got behind the wheel. Got oh, I was right. The booze wouldn't make him. He did have a fight with the taker. We had to try. The guy who was uh, the drunk, the drunk in the cell. Okay. Was that an optional area, <laughs> or do I? Is there somewhere for me to go? I think this might have been a really long detour for an optional page. Damn. Okay. Back down I go. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. He's gonna get a hell of a workout for a night over. Ah, I found the bird's treasure.
Man, I, it's not me. It's not really fair to complain because he can run way further than I could, ever could. But like, for a video game character, Alan does not have a lot of stuff. I think I'm too used to games that just give you info, or you're like recharge in like two seconds. <clears throat> So now that that detour is done, I guess we head towards the light. Oh. Huh. I didn't notice that before. Yeah, look at this. When I focus dodge this first. The camera actually snaps onto the nearest enemy. I didn't realize the game had a target locking. I'm usually aiming at the enemy anyway, so like I thought it was just a zoom in. Oh shit, I'm out of ammo. Well, that's not good. Uh, so it looks like I've gone back to basically not having a gun anyway. There's the next generator. There was no sensible reason for the power company work lines to be here. It was almost as if they'd been left for someone like me to use. Come on, guys. Come into the light. Oh, fuck. I am really low on ammo. And there it goes. So, like, they've said that how this game is not a survival horror. It's more of, a, like, a horror game with action. It's an action game with horror elements. And, like, I believe them, but there are moments where you really are struggling for supplies. But I know that the second game is way more deliberately survival horror. Oh, fuck. Oh, oh this is a bad spot. I need to be sprint. I need to be dodging in advance. Yeah. It. It is. Yeah. does actually seem to be a good spot there for Doug. And 
And I'm really low on batteries, actually. I've only got one left. The game was going easy on me before, but now I'm actually struggling with supplies. And that's why I don't feel bad about wasting a fucking bullet on those stupid cans. I did not survival horror properly, no, you're right. I really should have saved the RPG for the upcoming mini boss. You know, you only get one for free, you know. I, I could use it on the mid on the the Verdugo room, but I just I really felt like I needed it against those like five jobbers. Sarah trusted her gut, and her gut said Agent Nightingale was an asshole. He felt wrong, and it wasn't just the smell of stale booze. It was in the way he flashed his badge, pulled rank, the look in his eyes when he wanted answers. Where was Alan Wake? What was this about an accident? Where was his wife? And most importantly, why did she let Wake go? He wouldn't answer her questions. Federal business was all he'd say. Oh, there's actually a train running. I don't think this game has a train level, which is unfortunate. Love me a good train level. Hello? The most stubborn man I've ever met. Alice? Alice? Alan. Alan. I'm so afraid. It keeps me in the dark. Please help me. I look at you. Alan, and it's not you. Something else. Looking out from behind your eyes. Alice, I'm here. I'm so alone here. It's all gonna go to hell. You need to be careful. Cooperate. You know, I'm beginning to suspect that that's the not actually Alice's terrible, But that wasn't the voice. only thing that hadn't been right. Or rather, it is, but she it's manipulated. Somehow. But she had called me. The pipe wrenched itself loose from the bridge's steel framework. Wrapped in darkness, it floated in midair, twitching. For a moment, I didn't understand what I was looking at. The heavy object lurched at me with impossible force. I threw myself out of the way, but just barely. When I turned my flashlight on it, it shook in a dark rage before it flew at me again. All right, well, there's a marker there. It's not very... Precise. That's I progress. See a railway bridge up ahead, and a warehouse of some sort on the opposite shore. There we go. I hoped I could find a car from there. I realize that the Taken are just everywhere, but it's kind of funny how often you go into one of these supply areas and immediately get ambushed. It's almost like my mysterious benefactor is trying to lure me into a trap. Nope. I knew it. Anything behind here? Behind the building? No, nothing. Probably a thermos in there, and I'm just missing it. What do I actually have right now? This is the yeah, it's a shotgun. I wasn't sure if it was that or the hunting rifle. Maybe it messes up their UI design, but like, I I much prefer it when you have icons like this, that they have different colors. You know what I mean? Like, if you have to rely on just the shape alone, like, a lot of guns look the same. I 
I can't tell at a glance the difference between a hunting shotgun and a rifle. The darkness that was pursuing me was growing stronger, and it was taking over everything in its path. That has drained all of my... No, actually, no. I'm looking at the wrong symbol. I have one flare. I have six batteries in the top left. I'm just going to keep running. Maybe I can just skip these. In fact, I think I did. I think they've stopped. I slammed the door shut right in his smug face. He pleaded for me to open the door. True to form, the asshole actually thought I would obey. I had no sympathy left. No guilt either. Not for him. I took a moment to savor the scream. I bet I had a smile on my face. It was all that I had time for. The dark presence was inside the lodge with me. I wonder what Alan's thinking as he reads this. Like, wow, I'm a cold-blooded piece of shit. That guy probably deserves it. As a it. teenager, just starting to get interested in writing, Stephen King had been a source of inspiration to me. I thought about all the inanimate objects that had come to life in his books. No one is safe in a good horror story. Certainly not the protagonist. That's what makes them fun. This was anything but. The darkness could possess nice. anything. And it was getting closer. I love the heavy duty flashlight. It's got a long battery. Uh, there is, and later ones will have the short battery, but very powerful ones. Those are my favorites. They improve the combat piercing a lot, because, like, there's a bit of awkward downtime when you're waiting for their shield to drain before you can start shooting. And, like, it kind of, like, I don't know, it, it robs the momentum a little. But the, but the uh, other flashlight works a lot better for that, because, like, sure, it runs out quickly. But that just means managing your resources and a lot less time just staring at the enemy. I had completely forgotten that explosive barrels were a thing in this game. Or propane tanks, I should say. It occurs to me that propane tanks are a much more realistic thing to find lying around everywhere than explosive barrels. Like they're actually something that's in common use for heavy machinery.
grab these supplies. Quite a few supplies, actually. Can I use this radio? No. If it doesn't have a big green light on it, it's useless. This TV, on the other hand... I think we'll end the stream on this actually. It's getting time. Quests always bear fruit. Night springs. <laughs> <laughs> 